What's up guys, it's Jay with Bearded Dad Fishing and today we're talking about motorized kayaks and the must-haves and essentials to enjoy your time on the water and to make sure it's safe, efficient, and comfortable because motorized kayaks are here to stay with the rise of the autopilot, the Minn Kota 106, the Bass 100 from Johnny Boats, and the plethora of other options to add a motor to almost any kayak. You wanna make sure that you're safe out there, but before we get to that list, that joke of the day, how much does Santa Claus pay for parking? Nothing, it's on the house. And that dad joke is by Juan over at Cap and Hooks on YouTube. And if you have a dad joke, comment it down below and it might be on one of my next videos. So let's get into this list of essentials for motorized kayak fishing with number one, which is a repair kit. So having a repair kit like this, in my opinion, is one of the most important things you can have on your kayak. So this is a little 3600 Plano box that actually came with my Old Town uh, PDL 120. And in it, I have all types of little things to repair small problems and like um, moderate problems out on the water. So you wanna have a variety of things. First and foremost, zip ties, because zip ties can fix or hold together almost anything temporarily. I have electrical tape for more or less the same application. If I can't zip tie it, I can tape it. Or if I have any electrical problems on the water, like a bad terminal or something, uh, a wire came out, this could potentially fix the issue. A Phillips head screwdriver, of course. I also have little, uh, little zip ties with some rubber bands, blue Loctite, and batteries. You need batteries out there. So, if you have a remote control, I have a, a remote control for my autopilot. It takes AAA battery. I had to change it out on the water when I was over in Gunnersville a couple weeks ago. So always keep batteries on deck. I also have batteries for my, uh, for my controller for my Yak Power switch. I also have some floating prop nuts from Navarre Kayak Fishing. Now these are great for changing out a prop on the water. If something breaks, you don't need a tool like a wrench. You can simply just uh, loosen it by hand, take out the prop, put on the new prop, and then retighten it. Fairly, fairly simple. Uh, and he sells these. I believe they're two for 25 bucks, and they float, which is amazing. In addition to that, I also have a locking knob, which is specific to Old Town. So this holds down the, the PDL drive. Uh, and this kit kind of works for my PDL and for, for my autopilot as well. Uh, so that way if my knob, one of my knobs break, that hold down the drive, I have a backup here just in case. Uh, and I also have a couple other little screws, Allen keys, uh, some dielectric grease. Again, great to have because you never know on the water. One thing I don't have on here, uh, which I am, it's on the way over. So thanks to Ryan over at RJM Fishtails. I have two kill switches coming in because you have your kill switch out in the water, but anything can happen where you lose it, misplace it, whatever, and then your kayak is dead. I've never considered it with the whole year I've had my autopilot on the water until I watched his video on his kayak crate. So he always keeps those with him. So I have two coming in the mail and I'll keep one here and probably one in the truck or something else. But uh, a backup kill switch is always a good idea and as well as a spare prop. So I keep my spare prop on the back of my crate. Uh, so it's always there and it's just attached by some uh, zip ties. So all I gotta do is snap those zip ties off and I got another prop. So whatever you decide to have, just make sure it can service 90% of your needs out there. Prop, uh, prop nuts, uh, screwdriver, zip ties, duct tape, whatever it is, uh, make sure you have a repair kit because you never know when you need it until you need it and you'll wish you had it. And essential number two for motorized kayak fishing is a lithium battery. Now you might say, Jay, you don't need a lithium battery. You can do a sealed lead acid, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you can, you can do a sealed lead acid. However, I guarantee you a lithium battery is 1000% worth it and 100 times better than a sealed lead acid battery. Now, first off, it weighs a lot less and every pound on your kayak is precious cargo space that you need so that you don't go over your weight capacity. So if your weight capacity is 375 pounds or 500 pounds, every pound matters because it's gonna determine how low you sit on the water, where your center of gravity is, your tipping point, and how fast you can go when you're on there. So every pound matters when you're on a kayak, but 
It's also about how easy it is on your body because you're loading and unloading this battery into your kayak, into your car, out of your car to get it to the charger, to get it back to the kayak and lugging around a 60 pound battery is not the way, I promise you. So invest in a lithium battery. They're, they don't have to be that much more expensive. And the second benefit to a lithium battery is the usable capacity. So if you have a 100 amp hour lithium battery and it's 100 amp hours, you can use 80 to 90 of those amp hours in there. So 80 to 90% of the battery you can use. Whereas with a, a sealed lead acid battery, and this is true of any sealed lead acid battery, you can only use 50% before you start potentially damaging the cells in the battery. So you get to use much more of the capacity of the battery when you're talking about this invisible right here, uh, lithium battery. And contrary to popular belief, lithium batteries don't have to be crazy expensive. Now this is my Red Odo 100 amp hour uh, battery that I use for my trolling motor. And I've been using Red Odo for the better part of two years already. Uh, first to power up my fish finder and all my electronics. And now that I have the autopilot, I've been using it to power the trolling motor. Uh, and they are absolutely killer batteries and they don't have to be crazy expensive. So if you look at a lot of the popular uh, battery websites, you'll see that they're seven, eight, nine hundred bucks for 100 amp hours. Now Red Odo, this battery is $260 and it has the low temperature charging protection, which means I can charge it in the garage. And if the temperature drops below freezing overnight, it'll stop charging and it'll resume again once the temperature reaches uh, 40 or 41 degrees. There's tons of options with Red Odo, anything from 12 volt, uh, 12 amp hours, all the way to 400 amp hours. They have 24 volt, 48 volt too. So if you have uh, you know, an NK180, then you can get a 24 volt battery from them or you can rig up two 12 volt batteries to do the same thing. Lots of different options and much more reasonably priced than a lot of the competitors out there. And if you wanna see more information on lithium batteries and why they are superior for kayak fishing, I'll link my video below that I shot earlier this year on lithium batteries versus sealed lead acid batteries. Speaking in about batteries, that's a perfect segue to number three, which is making sure you have the proper battery charger. So if you have a sealed lead acid battery, you need a charger that's for that type of battery. If you have a lithium battery, you need one for that. So they do have some that are smart chargers that you can use for both, uh, but you certainly don't wanna use the wrong one for the wrong type of battery because you'll just mess up the battery entirely. They charge differently. So I have a Red Odo uh, 20 amp charger, and that's another thing you wanna look for is that you are getting the right speeds out of your charger. You don't wanna charge a 100 amp hour battery with a two amp charger. So if this battery is completely drained at 100 amp hour, then it's gonna take 50 hours because it does two amps per hour. So you wanna get something with a little bit more, especially for your trolling batteries. So again, this is a 20 amp charger from Red Odo. Uh, they have, again, competitively priced. This is $120. And if you don't really wanna spill $120 right now, you can get the 10 amp charger, which is around 80 bucks, uh, but they do have sales occasionally where you can get it a little bit cheaper. But you wanna make sure you have the right charger for the right size and the right application. Before we get to number four, I just wanna give a quick shout out to my channel members. Thank you for supporting the channel. Brian from the Michigan Fisherman, Lucas from the Outdoor Conquest, NL, Hamilton Bartles, RV Fishing Yet, and RNL Walters. I appreciate you guys. And if you're not a channel member yet, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can see all the perks and benefits that comes along with being a channel member within the Bearded Dad Fishing community. You get a lot of cool access to behind the scenes footage, early access to videos, and some really cool perks. So make sure you check it out and I hope to see you as a channel member. And must have number four for motorized kayak fishing is a paddle. Yes, you got a, a motorized kayak, so get rid of the paddle, but you need to keep a paddle with you just in case. I was fishing in Gunnersville just a couple weeks ago, and I had to bust out my paddle and start paddling to get out of the stinking weeds that we were in because we were like neck high in grass and weeds, and it clogged up my motor instantly. So you never know when you need one. Besides getting stuck in vegetation and grass, you can also be super shallow where you can't deploy your motor or your motor gets knocked up or anything else. You can break a, a shear pin, you can break a prop, you can you know, have a messed up terminal on your battery. A lot of things can happen uh, to your battery, to your motor, to your wiring, to whatever it is where you need a paddle. So make sure you get one. I have, it's literally a $20 paddle that I bought from Walmart that I've had for the last year and a half. 
and it works specifically for the purpose I need it for, which is to get out of bad situations and sometimes to launch because I don't wanna wet my feet or whatever because I don't have my big boots. But make sure you have a paddle with you at all times. And must have number five for motorized kayak fishing is an awareness for where you're fishing. And the reason for that is you need a lot more clearance when you're in a motorized kayak than you do if you're in a paddle only kayak. You don't wanna show up to a new body of water to find out this is way too vegetated or it's too shallow and you can't get your motor down all the way or you're paddling when you don't wanna be paddling. Uh, so it's really important to know where you're at. And so for this, I use the Omnia Fishing Premium Pro subscription and I absolutely love it. One of the best things is that it's only $50 per year. Crazy cheap and I love it, super affordable and it keeps everything in one spot. So let me show you guys exactly how this works. So all you have to do is open up the fishing app and it takes you right to the map to where you last had it. So I have it set to Gunnersville currently and it shows you your map just like so. Uh, and you can break it down by filter. So if you go to the bottom right, you'll see your filters. You can set it to satellite or standard. I prefer standard. And on here, you also have the filters that show you your water clarity, your water temperature, your, your contour maps, your bottom hardness, vegetation, and you have your weather. So you have your wind, precipitation, air temperature, lightning and storms. And it's great to have this all in one spot. So let's go over to the vegetation. You just click that on and hit done. And now it populates all the vegetated areas. And I was super surprised to see how accurate this was down in Gunnersville. So you can see all the different areas. You see your contour maps with your depths. Uh, and if you zoom out, you'll see it shows you the entire lake where the vegetation is. And now if you want to go see your hardness, your bottom hardness, you just click that, hit done, and now it auto-populates with the hardness. And if you don't know what any of this means, that's cool because you could just hit on the bottom left or the top left, the legend, and it shows you uh, what the colors mean. So from your softest all the way to your hardest bottom composition. Uh, and this is, again, super helpful for finding where the fish will be any given time of the year, depending what you want to fish, your fishing style, etc. cetera. Uh, and it's easy to use. You just go to the map and you can select exactly where you want to go. If you hit the little uh, magnifying glass, pick your lake. So Nakamixon is one of my favorite lakes locally. And there I am in Nakamixon. Again, it shows me the bottom composition. It shows me the contour maps. And if I want to see the current vegetation, which we don't have much of it here this time of year, there you go. It shows me where the vegetation is. And this is also uh, connected to social um, networking because what it does is you can fill out these reports by adding the little plus button and fill out your report. So your, your water body, your photo, the water temperature, and everything you want to fill out. And once you put it on there, um, other people can see it as well. So it's really easy and intuitive to use. The best part, again, is that it's just 50 bucks. And uh, I used to spend 50 bucks on Dunkin' Donuts every week uh, before my boy Dave Ramsey showed up and uh, whipped me into shape. So again, if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description below for the Omnia Fishing Premium Pro subscription. And if you thought this video was helpful, check out this video right here with my favorite kayak fishing accessories. So till next time, guys, peace and God bless.